when I learned about your work, my first thought was, okay, wait, am I supposed to eat to, to change my genetics or am I supposed to look at my genetics to decide what I'm going to eat? So why don't we start the conversation there? Why is there, is it so important to match these two? So, so delighted to be on your show. Thank you for having me as well. And I'm so delighted to talk to your audience and to answer your question in the shortest version, it's a yes and. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Minnie in the house. All right. <laughs> I appreciate that. The carnivore diet. Because of what we eat. Honestly, you've really touched my heart. So Fast Like a Girl, it's ready for pre-order now. I hope this book changes your life the way the information has changed hundreds of thousands of women that have applied it. From the bottom of my heart, enjoy and let's get healthy together. For starters, let me just thank you for coming on the Resetter podcast. My great so, pleasure, thank you. Yeah, really appreciate you being here. And um, I don't know what you know about our audience, but we have both men and women over 40, a lot of women going through menopause, a lot of women um, that are just really what I call trying to take their power back with their we health. Yeah. So this is why I wanted to have this conversation. And I'm going to be really transparent mm -hmm. that once I bought into epigenetics, I pretty much said, okay, I can do anything I want to overturn my genes. So when I heard your work and I learned about you from the higher dose gals, when I learned about your work, my first thought was, okay, wait, am I supposed to eat to, to change my genetics or am I supposed to look at my genetics to decide what I'm going to eat? So why don't we start the conversation there? Why is there, is it so important to match these two? So, so delighted to be on your show. Thank you for having me as well. Yeah. And I'm so delighted to talk to your audience and to answer your question in the shortest version, it's a yes and. So- Oh no, I hate yes and, <laughs> I gotta tell you. But I'll tell you why, I'll tell you okay. why. Okay. So uh, epigenetics is the science of how our environment influences our genes. So our genes are our genes and they will always be our genes. And so now in the world of epigenetics, we're looking at SNPs, which are single nucleotide polymorphisms, which are variants in that specific gene. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is that we match your genetic blueprint to your current state of health, because it's not just the blueprint that you have, which is, it speaks to what are, might be your vulnerabilities, but have those gene variants has been expressed. And how are they expressing? And food is a huge component. Mood is a big component. Our environment, what we put on our body, in our body, what, is, what we surround ourselves with. So yes, what we look at is what are those vulnerabilities, right? So we don't want to step in landmines. Right. And, and also what foods can support the, the expression that we would love mm -hmm. and also support the expression that we want to stay away from. So right. we say, are you eating the right, wrong foods? And so, for example, the foods that have been touted as being so healthy, let's talk about, I've named it killer kale, Dave Asprey and I. Yeah. Talked about that. So killer Nobody kale. Nobody likes kale. Kale's just getting beat up all over the place. There's a good reason for it. Yeah. So kale contains both oxalates and sulfur pieces. Now, we have 23,000 genes. We're actually not that complicated. We're tantamount to an earthworm in terms of the complexity of our genome. Isn't that interesting, right? I know, I've heard that, yeah. But we have the bigger brain and so we can think about it. And uh, the expression of the genes comes to where am I in my expression of these genes? Now, for example, take me. I have what I call, I'm scroogled from a gene perspective. I have, I have- Wait, 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 wait. What's that word, scroogle? Scroogled, I made it up. <laughs> You're like, you're screwed and, and what's Google? And, 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 you know, you just don't, can't Google it away. You know, you're Scroogle. Oh my gosh. I love that Scroogle. Okay. I'm so going to use that. I'll give you credit for it. Please do. Yeah. You can't Google it away. Right. It's like, oh my gosh, I just don't know what's going on. So if, if just my genome in it, in it of itself, I have, I'm like the princess and the pea. I've got impaired sulfur processing mechanisms. And we'll talk about that. That's, those are broccoli, cabbage, uh, arugula, bok choy, killer kale. I've got impaired um, oxalate metabolism. Those are my berries and my almonds and my black beans, right? I've got, I'm a double methylation girl, meaning I've got one SNP for either one. So that goes to fat and to protein. Wow, right? I've got a lot of genes that go to neurotransmitters. So I've got to really be careful 
with overmethylating, we think, oh, these you know functional docs say, okay, you've got this methylation gene. Let's just throw a lot of folate or B12 at you. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not, because right. if you have other genes like the COMP gene, which goes to catecholamines, or the CBS gene, which goes to sulfur, also neurotransmitters, I call that the central broadcasting station gene, mm -hmm. then giving you a B12 or a folate is going to overmethylate you. And so we look at are these buzzy bees? Are they going to kick your butt? Or are they helper bees? And so, and it changes based on where you are. So if you're in a really beautiful state of homeostasis, of balance, then I can have a little bit of broccoli here and there, and I can have some almonds and, and some black beans. Am I going to have them all together? Heck no. Am I going to start a smoothie in the morning? No way, but I can have them. However, if I just got whacked with mold because I just entered into a mold infested building, and I slept there at the hotel and I wake up and I can't remember my name because that mold has tripped my mm. COMT gene, then I better stay away from anything that feeds that mold like the oxalates, the berries, the almonds, which increase the oxalic acid, which then feeds the mold. So that's sort of like we have to do the yes and, yeah. but it's a very beautiful dance. And what I will tell you is I work with children from as young as I had a two and a half week old here. And oh. so we match the genetic blueprint of the mother and the father. So the baby can be its best self. Wow. And we work to a geriatric crowd. And I will tell you, Mindy, that some of these kids that are 10 years old, know more about their bodies than most adults because they've been, they've, they've been raised in this trajectory of, you know, this wildatarian way, the Cochrane method. And they're so empowered. We just took a young woman. She's been working with me for a decade. She was anaphylactic to 52 foods. Anaphylactic. This thing could have, her mother was always in mad, mad distress of, you know, I'm going to put my child into a public arena and she may die. She's eating all of those foods now. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. So we, we turned off the genes, her DAO yeah. genes, her histamine genes. She was so high in histamine genes and not able to process phase one liver detox genes. We right. literally reshaped her body and she is, her name is Liliana. I'm so proud of her. She is so empowered. She's a little, she is like in charge, this little 10 year old who's so in charge of her body and not Love have that. to live in fear. But you know, on a, on a global scale, that's, that's the kind of work we need to do with all children, you know, and empower them because the, I always say big pharma is not going to r relent. Big food is not relenting. Like we need to empower each individual. So it, let's use that two-year-old or the two and a half week old example. It, if we know a genetic profile of a two and a half week old baby on what foods they should eat, it, do we have to keep checking the test over time to see if those genes change? And will they change with things like puberty, vaccination schedules? Like what, what changes them? That phenomenal question. All right. So this two and a half week old baby, which what we do is we have the, we do the intersection of the mother's genes, the father's genes and the baby's genes and the mother breastfeeds to that, which is the lowest common denominator of what is best for that baby. Crazy. Okay. So, and what's expressed and yes, again, yes, it will change. This is the dynamism of us. This is why the whole aspect of the Cochrane method is eating to your genetic blueprint and your current state of health. So if you've just had a puberty expression, okay? So now you're this young lady and you've got all these hormones circulating. Well, those are fat soluble. And by the way, oh, you have the MTHFR C677T gene polymorphism, which you're already recycling. You're predisposed to recycle estrogen. Oh, and you have a lot of yeast infections, which is candida. I call candida the, the biofilm layer of, around candida, the jelly donut, because it's a lipid layer, right? And it mm -hmm. makes candida really hard to get rid of. Then what we do with these young ladies is during your period in mid-cycle, you go zero fat because your body's already having mm. to manage that overburden of the hormones. And I will oh tell gosh. you, it makes a huge difference in their, not only in the way that they look on the outside where their, their face is much, you know, less acne prone and they're less fluffy, yep. but mental health is so yep. important because estrogen and serotonin compete for the same little part on your cell receptor site. So when estrogen's out of control, that's why women's PMM, PMMS, PMDD, uh, and when women go through menopause, similarly, that's why they used to say, well, you know, it's, she's going through menopause, so she's having these wacky moods. Well, I say, let's just, it's my liver and my estrogen that's recirculating, recir and let me fix that, and then I'll be back to normal. Hmm. So 
your question around vaccines, I really hope that one of my goals, long-term goals on this planet as a human and an individual that we are so much in our power, Mindy, we have so much power when we're in our power and each person yep. has more power than we could ever imagine. So as a mother, I got into this because my son was, I was told was broken. And so there's a whole story behind that. And now he's not broken for sure. Of course. And so if we're going to, and I'm not completely anti-vaccine. However, if you have certain genetics, you better know what they are. Yeah. You better not vaccinate to the, in the wrong way. And now what I will say is over the last 20 years, vaccines have gone to from like 17 vaccines to over 80 vaccines. Yep. And they're, I work with a lot of autism. Yep. Um, and when these vaccines get joined together, five and one is a disaster. If you can't methylate, if you can't break down protein, these, the, if these viruses are proteins are attenuated in their life, that's a problem. Yeah. So I, absolutely. I think, um, I think the idea that there's a one size fits all, whether it's a workout, a medication, a diet, a fast, a supplement, like, can we, everybody that's listening, just put that away. Like that was a story that was created to simplify healthcare. And that is why we have so much chronic disease. Don't you agree? So well said. Put that down, everyone. Put yep. that down. It's so confusing because- So you confusing. Go, you go down one route. Oh, okay, everybody do this. No, everybody do that. And when people ask me, Terry, what should I do? Is this good for me? And I said, maybe, let's talk yep. about it, right? Yep. And what's back to being in our power, Mindy, is that the body is constantly giving us feedback. Yes. Yes. Right. But we don't know what it means. So I say I'm multilingual and one of my languages is body. I oh talk. My God, I body. love that. I'm going to start saying that because I don't speak another language. So, but I do speak body. I there totally you go. speak body. Oh my God. I love that. Right. So, so it's really important. So for example, if we get up in the morning, we have dark circles. Okay. That's an allergic shiner. So something I ate just gave me a histamine response, yep. right? If I touch my forearm and I see a white indentation, my lymph isn't working. So I'm fluffy. That means I'm, I'm, my lymph isn't working. That's a fat metabolism issue. If got yellow around my, uh, around my mouth, my liver's clearly not working. If I have a gray pallor, that's kidney. That means I'm not processing my proteins. Mm. You know, if I have fungus on any part of my body, I better stay away from anything that's mold fermented, yep. sprouted, even high histamine. So we can go down literally and scan our body every day and say, how am I and why am I? And again, part of my model, I'm really a teacher. You know, if, you, if people ask me, what's really, what really do you do? I, I teach and I educate, I inform, I empower. Yep. Because once we have information and that information is fluid, yep. the body knows, Mindy, the body knows. And so when somebody tells you, and I tell this to my clients all the time, if I'm giving you information and you're like, wait a minute, this doesn't feel right. You're your highest authority. Let's talk about it. Cause your body said, I don't think so. Uh, you know, I, I always tell my community that you, you don't need a fancy treatment. You need to know how to get yourself. Well, that would be like another paradigm shift that I feel like needs to happen is we have to stop giving our power away to health professionals of all kinds. And we need to start educating ourselves about us and, and creating a custom path for us. Once you get that, you know, and I, my passion is helping women. Once it, like a woman gets a hold of that, she's going to change her family. She's going to change her friends. She's going to change her community and teach that to everybody around her. So I love that you said that it's like, we need to stop looking at healthcare as I don't want to say a victim, but there's a, you know, somebody who's, who is giving their power away to the expert. It should be a synergistic team approach. Don't you think? 100%. And you know, this is a dance, right? Yeah. And so being a good listener on either side, and I, 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 hopefully I'm empowering my clients to listen really well, not only to me, but to their bodies and then keep, right. keep record. It's like, oh yes, I had this. And now I feel that way. Yeah. I will tell you just last week, we had a young woman that we worked with. She's 23 years old. She's had rheumatoid arthritis. That's a autoimmune condition for an inflammatory arthritic uh, pain mm -hmm. since she was two. Okay. Yeah. In wow. four months, that RA is gone. Wow. That's so crazy. from 21 years to four months, she had a massive sulfur sensitivity. She had fat metabolism issues. She had pathogens and she's like, 
I can't believe it. And my face is better. My periods are better. My stomach is better, not just my joints. And so, and she says, now when I don't, when I go off the Terry ranch, they call it, and I don't eat those, you know, those foods, then I eat those foods that aren't my best matches. Then I feel it. Right. But over time, as we heal and seal the gut and the, the memory fades and we're getting new, we're building new neurological pathways, new neuronal pathways. So we're not saying, okay, if this then, cause the body is so adaptive and we, yeah, it's always adapting. We are, we're yeah. patterned. We're, we're, we're inherently patterns, multiple trillions of patterns that are happening every millisecond in the body. But when we write the same script, we're going to get to the same output in the same pattern. When we rewrite the script, the pattern changes and right. that's so powerful. Right. Yeah. I, I, amen. And I, the other thing I want to highlight that you said a few minutes ago, and this is something that I've been really teaching my community is that when, uh, with a woman who has hormones, when those hormones go high, there is a lifestyle change that needs to happen. And, you know, this is what my, my new book that'll come out fast, like a girl is really teaching, like, how do we fast around these hormones? And I feel like that also is the new wave uh, that we need to talk about. When we talk about customizing our lifestyle for our hormones, we need to look at when hormones go high, there's a, a lifestyle change. When they drop, we usually can can stay do a, a few things a little different. But it's in the like you said, ovulation a week before the our periods that we really have to shift. Absolutely. So what what how do we use genetics to tie into those two parts of the cycle? Great question. Well, today I actually had a client here who's been a client of mine for almost two decades, and we graduate them, but they come back and they check in with us. She had had a full hysterectomy at 25. Um, had her gallbladder taken out in her early 30s. She was been on thyroid medication forever. She used to be a size 16. Now she's a size four. She's not on thyroid medication, right? So what we found for her is her genes, she had a multiple array of fat metabolism impairment genes. MTHFR, C677T, that goes to how you break down hormones, how you break down fats, the VDR attack gene, how do you make vitamin D and assimilate it? Because that's a hormone precursor. The APO gene, I know we talk about APO as in Alzheimer's genes, but it's also cholesterol genes. That's a fat mm. metabolism impairment gene. She also had an oxalate metabolism gene. So oxalates build that oxalic acid, which builds biofilm, which is a fat, which then builds, can, you know, feeds candida and strep and all those things, which then disrupt insulin, which is a fat storage hormone. Right. So looking, and then you have the INSR gene, which is what is your insulin receptor gene? So we look at all those genes and we say, how are they dancing together? Mm. And what's so fascinating, Mindy, is that she would always have GI issues because she would dump fat because her body couldn't metabolize the fat. She was on thyroid medication. It was hurting her. She's now off of all thyroid medication. She takes a tiny bit of pregnenolone. It manages everything for her. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. it's really fascinating that the body has this incredible ability to do what it's supposed to do if we're not sabotaging it. Right. So, so the other thing I know about um, genetics, hormones, is that there are a class of, of toxins that dramatically shift our, the way that our genes express themselves, the way that our hormones, and, and the biggest one is heavy metals. We do a, a ton of heavy metal detoxing. I've watched thousands of people detox in very different ways. So talk a little bit about where detox comes in because you have like, okay, yes, the genes determine how you're going to detox, but we also have that the toxins are going to impact the genes. We're like, it's sort of a double-edged sword, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk about the genes that impact uh, uh, liver detoxification. Okay. Okay. So we've got multiple. There's a family of genes called the CYP450 family of genes. That's an umbrella of 450 SNPs that goes to phase one liver detoxification. Under that, you've got the PON1 SNP that goes to how you metabolize chemicals and perfumes. You've got the CYP2D6 gene, I have it, which goes to how you metabolize, believe it or not, turmeric. If you mm-hmm. take turmeric and you have that gene, you're totally scruggled. It can slow your <laughs> It can slow your I love that term. I'm so <laughs> gonna use it. <laughs> By up to 55%. My kids used to make fun of me because I couldn't eat curry. 
I'm like, now I know kids, I got the CYP2D6 gene. Yeah. Get that curry off my plate. And then, so another thing that has to do with heavy metals is not just about detoxification, but there's another piece called the HFE gene, which goes to, are you prone to hemochromatosis? That is iron overload. Guess what, folks? Iron is a heavy metal. Iron also will create, become a lipid-like oxidative stressor that will increase your pathogenic load because these pathogens like to feed on iron. So when I look at heavy metals, I also look at what is your body's ability to process fats along with your detoxification genes because heavy metals hide in lipid layers. Mm-hmm. They hide yeah. everywhere. They, they hide, hide in fascia. They hide in lymph. They hide yeah. in nervous tissue. Like they do, but they really they encircle that they encase themselves in this little film, right? That's why we have to chelate, right. right? And so some of the some of the chelators that I use, believe it or not, salt emulsifiers, vitamin C. If you don't have a lot of oxalic acid, they do. They hide everywhere. I work yeah. with a lot of MS. It was copper toxicity for a woman, and we figured out where is this coming from. She did pottery and yeah. copper was in the kilning. Crazy. Oh yeah. Right. No, I, some of the worst heavy metal tests I've seen have been with artists, like drawing, like people who are like painting or been doing ceramics. It's, it's really interesting. So, so, so on that, let's just stay on the heavy metal. Cause this one really fascinates me. Mm-hmm. Um, is that once you remove the metal out, you find the rhythm for the person. Yes. Literally in our world, what we've seen is health comes back. You know, a huge piece of what I believe is that the body heals itself. You just have to remove the interferences that is blocking it from healing. So do we then see if I, if I find my rhythm with detox, I remove everything out. Now, is there going to be a genetic shift? that happens? Yes. So again, genes will never change their expression changes, right? So how are they behaving? So now I can go ahead and do a little bit of acrylic and I'm okay because my, it's, it's the, I call it the allergy stacking theorem is how much can my body tolerate before it trips both from a detoxification perspective and a genetic perspective. And so this is where we do the dance right? And we do the, I call it the practice of the practice. So if I know that I'm a pure, a poor detoxifier, which I am, Mm -hmm. again, I'm the princess in the pea. Every day I juice with a green juice that's neither oxalate rich or sulfur rich. Because if I were to juice with kale, which I have, I have to had literally to get off the road because I can't think. I couldn't find my way home. Right. Now I, I particularly uh, juice with cilantro and cucumber. Why is that? They're neither oxalate sulfur. It doesn't impair phase one. It doesn't have heavy metal. Cilantro is a heavy metal chelator every day. And cucumber is really rich in silica and also rich in water. And silica is like this beautiful binder, right? And so every morning I start my morning with that cucumber cilantro juice. I put a little vitamin C in there. I put my wildlife, my electrolyte powder in there. And I'm good to go. I'll put a little yeah. uh, collagen if I if I want to, but typically that's you got to keep that liver clear. It's almost like washing your skin every day. Yeah, we gotta love our liver, yes. and we have the to. The liver understand. is the most important organ in the body, especially Absolutely. in 2022. Holy moly! Yeah, yeah. So Agreed. I am I am committed to juice. Now I don't physically juice every day because I have a centrifuge. Uh, mm, uh, base yeah. juice that keeps the enzymes alive for about three or four days. So I just, I just juice a bunch and then I drink it every day. And I, and I don't purely juice because if I were to do that, sometimes it's too much of a hit on the liver. So I do about a third of my, and then I do a third water liquid yeah. um, to help metabolize. So, and I will tell you, how do you know if your liver's backed up? What's the two really easy signs? One body odor. Mm. If you have body odors, that means those hormones are not clear. All right, ladies, this is super important. If you go, okay, what's going on? I don't use deodorant or antiperspirant because I don't, I don't have a scent. When I travel, I just got back from filming something. When I travel and I'm I'm off plan and I can't get to my green juice, then I bring cilantro drops, right? But if I really am off plan and I'm eating the wrong foods, I can say, see a difference, right? And I'm like, oh, thank you. I got to love my liver a little bit more when I get home. Yep. So another thing is it comes out your skin. It's the, you know, it's the largest detoxifying organ, right? If you feel like, oh my God, I feel like I have a little acne or gosh, I'm feeling fluffy right under my arm is hurts here. That's lymph. Yeah. The body's always giving us feedback, but purely, truly 
for women and hormones and you know your your audience which yeah. is in that 40 to and above if, if that's correct then we're in perimenopause because 35 to 55 is considered you can be yeah. in perimenopause and over it's, that 20 year period dark zone the dark zone <laughs> It could be light. It could be light. Could, there's a lot going on in that zone of 20 years. Let's just oh, say that. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That's, that's and good stuff too. Oh, absolutely. It, and I can say it could be a, a dance of cha-cha where you're back and forth, back and forth, or it could be the waltz and you're literally yeah. just dancing that's on right. air. Right? That's right. So, and we can choose it. So the thing is truly is gotta love your liver, understand what are your best detoxifiers? Where do you hit that tipping point? And if you're juicing and feel badly, don't juice with that. It's, it's right. feedback. Keep, keep, yeah. Don't keep trying to say it'll get better. No, I won't. Yeah. So this, this leads me to my other question and probably why I've shied away from diving into more extensive genetic tests is that my, my vision for the world to end chronic disease is that we've got to be able to get a tool into everybody's hand, whether they can afford the tool or not which is why I love fasting because everybody can afford that. So is, what do we do if I can't afford a genetic test? Are there like in your book, is there like signs where you could know because you've also left a lot of great clues um, that people can learn how to read their bodies because if we're gonna get healthy, we have to have something that everybody can do. That, you know, again, 100% and I'm all about access for all. And so we've developed a quiz to figure out what wild type are you based on our wild deterian umbrella of the four major portals of what I feel disease falls under. And so again, the quiz is very intentional. So for example, if you can't build muscle, you know, you're working out and you can't build muscle, you're not breaking down protein. That means you might have this tendency to have the A1298C polymorphism for, for methylation that you're not breaking down protein, right? If you, if you go to the, if you eat asparagus and you go to the bathroom, <clears throat> excuse me, and you can smell it coming out. That's a sulfur gene. I'll bet you a bison burger, you've got that CBS or the Suox or the BH4 gene, right? Did you just say you'd bet me a bison burger? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And I need to be friends. It was like, <laughs> I love the words. That was so good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I would love that. We'll have a glass of wine after. Yes, that. we'll go Great. have it. But maybe I should see if I have the gene for it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I, but, but to your point, so I think what, what I feel is that we've got to teach people how to read their body and the, and the healthcare system in which we have grown up in says, if you feel bad, you got to suppress it. You've got to change it. And one of the things I've said to my patients over the years, whenever they say something like, oh, I feel horrible or something ha new happened, I'm like, fabulous. Okay, let's try to identify what your body is saying. So I feel so passionate about trying to get tools to people that don't cost money, but it, a large part of that is going to have to be education. Yeah, a large part of that. And actually I'm working on, um, I'm in the, in the process of licensing my IP to a consumer app that literally it's a very, very detailed quiz. And it says, these are the foods you can, and these are the foods you shouldn't. And these are yellow, Amazing. green, and uh, red zone. And this is why, because it's really based on an epigenetic, my module or my yeah. algorithm of the Cochrane method, which is very, very complex in the algorithmic, but anything that works should be simple in its application, right? Yes, agree. So how do we simply apply it? You don't need to know, you don't need to be a biochemistry geek like me, right? But you just gotta know that if I eat sulfur and my joints hurt, I'm not gonna eat that. And what is yeah. sulfur? Okay, let me go down here. And where is my tipping point, right? Yeah. Cause I call like uh, Bush uh, number one, the kinder gentler sulfur kids. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah. for example, uh, cauliflower is sulfuric. However, it also has a high manganese. So manganese is really important for lowering that histamine response. And if you have something like POTS, posterior or the static tachycardia syndrome, where your autonomic nervous system is whack, right? It's mm -hmm. way turned on, then a little bit of manganese in that cauliflower may benefit you. And so this is what I call the hierarchy of needs mm -hmm. in the body. So for example, oxalate is a big chocolate. I'm um, excuse me, chocolate is a big oxalate. Mm -hmm. However, if you need dopamine, if you need serotonin, if you need magnesium, then that hierarchy of needs wins. Now, how do we know the hierarchy of needs? Well, I'm, I did not develop applied kinesiology, but I have modified it in a way that gets super granular. And so it's giving us real-time feedback. Can you do this yep. right now? Right. right. So we just had somebody today who was sensitive to oxalates, yet 
her nervous system was off and her dopamine and her serotonin were off. And so she could eat some level of oxalate, or, or, excuse me, chocolate. Are you going to eat that chocolate every day all day? No, but it may be some things sometimes may be right for you. And so this is the elegant dance of really getting to know your body. Yeah. And I'm here to really show people that you, you don't have to be a biochemist, but if you start listening and you start practicing yeah. the process, then it becomes easy because we are building again, back to the building of these new neuronal pathways of saying and feeling because the body's always giving us feedback. Oh yes, this risk corresponds to this. Okay, yeah. got it. Just like Liliana, the 10 year old who's so, does she know biochemistry? Of course not, but she's so flipping knows her body, Mindy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was, I was going to say, you know, one thing I realize I do every day and I didn't, I didn't realize it till you said it right now is when I, I have a morning time ritual and I kind of assess how I'm feeling and there's sort of different symptoms. And then I go back to the day before and I go, okay, what did I eat? What supplements did I take? What behaviors did I do? And if I don't feel good, I usually go back and look at what did I do that didn't match how I want to feel today. And I feel like maybe that's the starting place for everybody is let's just, we have to start to realize when we have joint pain, it could be nutrition. When we have um, anxiety and depression, it could be something going on in our gut. Like if we start to just take that part of the conversation, we've now really made a big difference in how people can interpret this, don't you think? Absolutely. And it gives your power back. So for example, right. histamine, I call it sneezing on the inside. You just don't have to have a rash or a chew to have histamine. Histamine, we had one client, idiopathic anxiety disorder. It was all related to an increased hydrogen sulfide in her gut that was creating a mast cell response that was creating histamine. Once we took away the histamine reasons and we match her genetic blueprint for, to her current state of health, her idiopathic anxiety went away and all the really? pharm pharmacologicals amazing. that she was taking were only backing up her liver because yeah, it was a histamine amazing. issue. Amazing. Yeah. So I, I hope everybody's getting that. Like if, if you're listening and you're like, okay, well, I don't know what all these genes are. For starters, you have a book, uh, The Wild Terrian. Wild Terrian? I yes, love the name. Diet. Yeah, you're uh, you're obviously good at names, like naming stuff, like stuff like Scrugal. <laughs> like, oh my God, that was amazing. Um, but I but that th that would be a place to start. They could read your book yes. and then they could start today by saying, How I feel today. Let me go back to the meal before I ate. Let me go back to the day before, and then let me start to kind of get curious about how I feel after I eat certain foods. Would it, could it be that simple? It's that simple. And also food is primordial. However, if you could be eating your best match of foods and you just got some tremendously negative news and all of a sudden your body just flooded your system with epinephrine, which is what I call the dirty cupcake. It's a fat and a sugar. Epinephrine will also impede the signal for the pituitary to signal the esophagus to produce, I'm sorry, the esophageal sphincter to produce hydrochloric acid. So now you can't break down protein and right. hydrochloric acid is the key that unlocks enzymes. So you could be making your enzymes, but hydrochloric acid's missing. Again, you're scrugal. So all of a sudden that meal you had, you can't break it down. Yeah. And you're like, I'm oh, so confused. I just had my best meal that I know is right for me. Oh, but I just got this really like take me off my center. Yeah. Use and my body flooded itself with this neurohormone that stopped everything in its tracks. That so the my other question, and then we are going on to quantum physics because that's even <laughs> more exciting. I mean, the, gosh, I need like two hours with you. Um, is okay. What if I've got a toxic mouth situation, or I've got breast implants, or I'm living in a moldy home? Like I can I can look at my genetic profile, but there's still you know, I'm still being toxified on a regular basis. Is, uh, is there a way to overcome that, that dripping of toxins every single day, yes. knowing with nutrition? Absolutely. Because I call food, Mindy, the alpha and the omega. And I work with a lot of explant victims, if you want to mm -hmm. call them that. I don't even want to call them survivors. Yeah, victim. I hate that word. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's not right. use that word. Right. Uh, explant experiences. Okay. There we go. Excellent. So a lot of toxicity, right? And what I find is why can someone get an implant and be okay? And why can someone get an implant and not be okay? Right, right. right? Thank you. I've been asking the same question or like have a mouthful of like root root canals 
or a mouthful of amalgams, like, and, and they're fine, but the other person can't get out of bed. That's where it gets to the genetic vulnerabilities. Okay. Okay. So if you can't break down heavy metals, because all that phase one liberty toxification genes are, you're vulnerable with, if you have problems breaking down biofilm because you can't break down fat and you've got the HLA-DQ2A gene, which means you can't break down mold very well, okay? If you've got a lot of neurotransmitter genes, that means you're, you're more susceptible to really setting off neurological responses, which then is going to increase because we have more neurotransmitters in our gut than we do in our brain. So you have something and you set off all these neurotransmitters, which then completely shift the microbiota of your gut. Yeah. Right. You're going to be, that's why, why did Susie get nine a breast implant and did great. And she lives, you know, in, in uh, a, a super fun site, right? A super fun site. <laughs> <laughs> and she's thriving and, and happy. Thriving. What the heck is that? Right. And I am yes. so careful and I'm just screwed all the time. Right. I can't, I'm, I'm toxic. Now genetics are part of it. And it's what tripped the gene. So the Cochrane method has four portals of epigenetic expression, pathogenic environment, which includes foods. It includes your super fun site, emotional. Oh my gosh. That is the biggest signal to the gene. And the, in the hierarchy of needs of the Cochrane method is calm the body first. Mm -hmm. If you are signaling and a fight or flight response, everything else is going to be like salmon swimming upstream. It's going to be so much harder. And then the, the fourth one is, I just got whacked a physical impact. I had one gentleman, 18 stools a day after being, he's a serial gym owner, right? So super entrepreneur, Mr. Buff. He comes to me, he sits in front of me. He's like, I've, I've been told you can help me. I've been to at least 20 GI doctors. I've lost like 35 pounds. I've lost my muscle mass. I've lost everything. And that was, you know, my physiology and I can't stop going to the bathroom and I'm literally dehydrated and, you know, it's just a bad, bad scene. Mm -hmm. And I I have a very intentional intake form. And I'm like, oh my God, there's nothing here. Yeah. This guy, I got nothing for you. But then this is where we become a really curious observer. His name's Bob. And I'm like, Bob, I'm seeing your eyes a little off. Tell me about that eye. He goes, oh, I got elbowed at a basketball game 18 months ago. I'm like, Really? When did your thing start 18 months ago? So what we figured was that impact to the eye shifted mm-hmm. his vasovagal nerve, causing a massive reactivation of all the neurotransmitters in his gut. Fascinating. It was a vasovagal response. Yeah. Interesting. So no GI. Again, I'm, again, I love it. And I'm like, how do we bring this to everybody? Because everybody can't afford an, an analysis. So I I love the idea and I love the thought of healthcare moving in this direction. And I want to see a healthcare system for all. Absolutely. And the healthcare system for all really starts in the home. And it really starts with, okay, like you do every morning, you know, what did I do the day before? Let's, let's be really curious. The, Mm -hmm. the, The new healthcare systems starts with replacing fear with curiosity. Ooh, I love that. I love that. Yes. Yes. Beautifully said. Thank you. Okay. I've, I've, we've got to dive in before I close this down. I, again, I'm going to, I'm going to have to bring you back or you and I need to connect so we can geek out on this more. I'd love to. So, okay. Let's talk about the intersection of spirituality with science. Um, because uh, people are always surprised that I'm so spiritual and so scientific at the same time. And I, I laugh and I say what we call woo woo. You guys can call it woo woo. We actually now call it neuroscience. Absolutely. So I have been anointed the spiritual scientist. Okay, there we go. And the woo, I call it wooology, the biology of woo. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. So it is neuroscience. And so when you think about the emergence of science, science is ever in the process of discovery. And so that which we used to think is woo is really energy. So now we know and, and National Institutes of Health has proven that we have this bio field of energy around us. And so we are energetic beings that are vibrating at a molecular rate of speed that causes mass, Mm. right? So we are just moving at a certain rate of speed that causes mass. So how does spirituality and science come together? Well, we know that every thought that we think, and this is back to how powerful we are, we exist in infinite potentiality. This is in the world of the universe, the metaverse, quantum physics. 
when we ascribe a thought to anything, we are now engaged in a wave because every thought has a wave. Every wave has a frequency and vibration. That frequency and vibration lives within a certain capacity. Hmm. Once I have done that, I have now started my path that isn't another path. So if I'm in the frequency of, I'm always going to be sick. I can never understand mm. myself. I can't get it right. Mm. You're literally creating a frequency match to that. Outcome. Agreed. Yep. Okay. Now, faith, God, source, however, wherever you are in the paradigm of your spiritual aspect of who you are. When we look to something greater outside of ourselves, which is, I call it the universal fruit of wisdom, which lies in all of time. So time now, and we're really starting to see more and more time as a construct. Mm -hmm. We literally live in vertical time, mm -hmm. not horizontal time, because all yep. time is, is this time. And if we can move into that still point, which is, it, why do we do this? Because it's the heart center. We now know that the heart has gray matter. Guess what? The heart's our brain. Christy, yeah. Oh, I didn't know it. I didn't. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So it's the spirituality. It's like why namaste back to center. Yeah. Equanimity. This yeah. is the even mind, right? And yeah. so when we, when we move from the heart rather than the brain, we're moving in the right direction. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to No, 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 no. And I have so much I want to say on that. Two things. Um, one is when we're in the head and let's just use it in a day-to-day -day basis and somebody triggers us and now we're like spiraling and we're like, this day is bad. That person's bad. This is going wrong. In fact, everything else is going wrong. Blah, 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 blah. Um, is there a, something we can do to stop ourselves in that yeah. moment? So that, I, it, and what I find helpful is what you just said, which is remember, do you want to keep that frequency going? Is that what you're interested in? Like, that's how I can talk myself off the ledge is like, do you want to step this to be your reality? Or are you ready to change it? Yes. So great question. And I have a simple solution, which I actually apply to myself quite often. The first thing is I'm interrupting this broadcast. Mm. Okay. We're going to stop this. So I have, is, you know how they, in, in the firemen, they say, stop, drop and roll. I got a whole stop, drop, and roll for inter interrupting patterns that we don't want to continue. So first I'm interrupting this broadcast. I am stopping it, mm -hmm. okay? I and then that. I am dropping it. And so, because energy is energy and it's not going to be extinguished. So I've got to literally move that energy through me. And that dropping could be, I'm going to drum, I'm going to yell, but we have to move. You know, I, I jog every morning. I call that my meditation in action, right? No, but if yeah. we're, if we are literally in a situation, we're going to interrupt the broadcast. And even if I'm moving 12 feet, I've moved away from the energy I was just in. And then we're going to roll. We're going to roll into a higher frequency thought. And so this is where we have it already. We can do many things. Oh, I have a song that I love that just puts me right mm -hmm. back in the center. Right. Oh, I have a scent that when I've been in a meditative yeah. in the equal mindset, equal mind space, I have put gardenia, which is the flower of yeah. the angels. And I'm like, okay, oh, that's what I want to remember. Because scent is the is 5,000 times more acute than any other of our yeah. senses. And so if I know that when I'm in an equal mind and that beautiful heart center space and I smell gardenia, when I smell it again, that's the pattern. That's the yeah. memory, right? Right. So yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to do gardenia or I'm going to think of something, right? Or read something that's it's in like your a pattern phone. up. It's like a pattern interrupt. It absolutely yeah. is. It is a pattern interrupt. And over time, we're going back to center. And so now it's like, oh, I'm out of my power. Let me get back to like Bozo the Clown. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Those little punching things. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah. But you know, Bozo always got back to center. So yes. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I'm over here. Uh -uh. Love that Stop, analogy. drop, and roll. Yeah. Oh, yeah. let me get back to center because in center, I'm in my power. And in my power, I have infinite potentiality to do good things. Oh my gosh. I, I, I love that. Okay. My net, my other question on the, the original statement was it's hard to keep your, to always come from the heart. Let's just, let's just be real. Um, like I, I really, this year, especially I'm, a, I, I'm, my audience knows this, that I'm a recent empty nester. I I'm not in my formal practice anymore. And I, so I've been really working on myself. And one of the things I've been working on is keeping an open heart. And I find my heart many times being like, you're going to get hurt. What are you doing? That person wronged you. Like, I don't know if that's heart or head, but 
what are some strategies? Cause I, I see for humans, if we could all keep our hearts open, yeah. we could, we could change so much, but we're not doing that. So give us some tricks on how do we keep the heart open? Okay. Well, first of all, when we're in that state, we have to be compassionate with ourselves and give us grace and just say, look, okay, it's all right. This is why we're in human form. Cause we're here in a human massive experiment to grow spiritually. Yeah, it is a human experiment. <laughs> it is. This it is, is true. Is. It is. Yeah. And so, and so then I go back and go, wow, that's that seven-year-old girl that was a trigger. And so I'm going to take that version of myself and I'm going to hold her and say, it's okay. And you can have these moments. Yeah. So sometimes this is the thing we don't allow ourselves to have the moment. So then we suppress it and then we yes. get schooled again. Yes. Right. It's really important in human form that we have these moments Yes. and give compassion and I call it laying grace over it. Right. Right. Because I'm not going to forgive myself because then that means I did something wrong. I'm just going to lay grace on it. I'm going to lay grace on that seven-year-old girl that was the trigger that said, oh, honey, it's okay. Right. And it's okay yeah. for you to have that moment. Yeah. Now, what I strive to do is when I keep having those moments, what is it that I'm still not willing to look at, which is an aspect of myself that keeps triggering me back to that, right? I may not be That's in my heart, smart. but I'm always going to be curious. What aspect of that am I, one, not willing to look at? Two, not willing to let go of, or is there something that's still serving me? Is there some mm -hmm. aspect of that that's still serving me? So I still so need true. to capture whatever it is that's serving me in that aspect of the uh, that iteration of me, that version of me that I can bring with me yeah. and bring it oh, in. I love that. I love that. And it's a practice. I mean, I think everything you're saying, again, I go back to this healthcare paradigm mm -hmm. that really messed us up. Because what it said is you have one problem, one diagnosis, one pill. And we, when we come into this kind of art of health, yes. it's, it's not one problem, one pill diag situation. It's a practice of health. I always say, why was health a noun? It should have been a verb. Absolutely. Oh, that's so well said. It should, it is, it is the practice of the practice and we're ever iterative. And so this is another thing I'm going to leave your audience with is we are dynamic creatures. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're in constant motion internally. If we stop moving, we stop being. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. And so to yeah. think that I can do this and I'm always going to do this and it's always going to work is a false floor. Right. And so to get comfortable with the fact that we will be dynamic. Right. And we're going to be ever curious on where that dynamism is in the moment and not be afraid because yeah. fear paralyzes truth. That's what I say. And so that. really be in the space of compassionate, curious, not afraid. And fear sometimes is in the moment it can get us out of the way, but not in the drip of fear, right? Yeah. Drip, 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 yeah, drip, yeah. drip. It's always afraid this low level fear, <gasps> can't catch my breath, right? My shoulders are up here. Yeah, oh my yeah. God, I, I have TMJ, you know, right, those kind right. of things, body talk, yeah. right? Huh, I just love this. So I'm going to have to bring you back or I don't, we got to meet somehow. Like, I think, if, yeah. I think if we lived in the same town, we'd be besties. So uh, I love, I love this. So Thanks. let me, let me finish with this question. Um, uh, it's a question I ask everybody uh, as we went into 2022 for the resetter podcast, it, there was a lot of fighting going on in the world. There was a lot of anger that was unresolved. And so I decided to dedicate this year to gratitude. Wow. So do you have a gratitude practice? If so, what is it? And what are you grateful for in 2022 so we can keep that wave of gratitude going? Wow. Okay. So what I say in 2022 is do you in 2022. So oh, I love that. The thing is, you got to be true to yourself, right? Yeah. So I am grateful that I strive to be in authenticity with who I am and yeah. all the versions that, that come with me, yeah. you know, those parts that still need some love and healing and those parts that are really badass. Yeah. You know? And so I am still a collection of all those aspects of myself. And I am now truly owning and bringing with me all of them. So I'm going to be yeah be you in 2022. I and when that. we're really authentic, then we can literally move forward with no interruption because there's mm -hmm. nothing in my field that says I'm not being true to myself. Yeah. You know, on that point, I just want to point out that when you're in the presence of somebody who's living authentically, you feel more comfortable. Yes. 
Like, like if you want to know who the authentic people are in your life, when you're with them, you feel comfortable when people are not being their authentic self. I find energetically, I'm like, I don't know why I'm, I can't relax right now. Why can't I relax? Cause there's interruption in their field and you're feeling it. Yeah. If there's flow because they're just being them, whatever that them is, they're being authentic to self. So there's nothing that they're hiding. There's no secrets, right? There's no interruption. Well, this was amazing. How do people find you? I, I just love this. And we're going to have to somehow join forces and meet in person. Absolutely. I, I would love to. I'm a huge fan of books. I mean, as an author, I think you can heal yourself through so much through books. So I'm going to recommend everybody. We'll put links in the Thank in you the so much. Yeah. So but Terry, people- Co- Terry Cochran.com. That's how you find me in our, in our clinical work. Uh, all our, our supplements are there. The wild vegetarian uh, diet living as nature intended on Amazon. I also have another organization I'm really proud of. It's called the Global Sustainable Health Institute. Mm. I have launched that to teach my Cochrane method. We're in the beta stages of that. I also do private advising. That's quantum advising. It's by invitation only. I work some, mm. with some really interesting and cool folks in that world on, across all disciplines, helping mm. them catalyze their infinite potential by moving those it. rocks out of their field that keeps them less than fully authentic. So amazing. Amazing. Well, Thank this you. was incredible, Terry. I just appreciate you showing up. I'm, I'm so happy that Lauren and Katie brought you to higher dose. So, so I could experience you and I really hope we connect someday live. Let's so, do it. you yeah. got it. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll share some wild game. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I'm all in. I'm all in. And maybe some wild organic wine. We can absolutely. Yeah. I love it. it. All right. My great pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Have a great one.